Bob, is there life in the universe beyond Earth, and is it worthwhile for us to try to discern it? Well, I think it is certainly worth our while to try to discern it. Uh, whether there is life off, off our planet, we don't really know. It's just it's a it's a guess that uh, uh, that the same laws that produced us may have produced other living creatures. Uh, no scientist could fail to have been disappointed when we landed Viking on Mars and looked at that uh, uh, that yeah. dismal landscape. Uh, and, and nothing should have inspired us to take better care of this planet than, mm -hmm. uh, than that view of Mars. Um, maybe we'll find life on Mars yet. It would be of a very low form, and it would be below the surface. It can't exist on the surface of Mars because of radiation levels. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll find it beneath the oceans of, uh, of Europa, moon mm -hmm. of Jupiter. Uh, we ought to look. Uh, we have never seen a life form to which we're not related. We can measure our relationship to the lowliest creatures on Earth. We share half our genes with yeast, for God's sake. <laughs> Uh, so we're all related. Could nature have solved the problem some other way? We would love to find life off of Earth so we could, we could answer that question. When we find life somewhere else, we're going to know a lot more about ourselves. Uh, that's kind of a, a final question of how life arises. That's one of those difficult issues because when life arises, it it's soft. It doesn't last. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, we, we need to solve that one. Are there, is there life on other planets, on other suns? And that's the most exciting thing that has happened in this new century that we're in, new millennium that we're in. We have begun to discover planets on other suns, not just now and there and then, but lots of planets. So planets are a very common sort of thing. Now, I always give my class, a, uh, we, we start off on the first day asking, how many of you think we're going to go to the stars someday? And most of the hands go up. And so then we start planning the mission. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, how big a spacecraft do you have to have? Uh, how near is the closest star? And, uh, uh, and how fast That's are you going to have to go? to get there and back in a human lifetime, this kind of question. Uh, what kind of spaceship do you have to have? Does it have to have basketball courts? Some of them say it does. Uh, that, but as we progress through the semester, toward the end, we finally sit down and calculate the energy that it would require, and they suddenly realize two things. The bad news is we're not going there. The good news is they're not coming here. Uh, so we can, we can dismiss this whole thing of UFOs, alien life forms visiting Earth. We can just dismiss that. It just isn't happening. It isn't going to happen. Uh, the energies are just too great. Well, but you can postulate generational kinds of, uh, of uh, travel where uh, uh, civilizations would colonize gradually it, it, over it, it, long that, that's right. periods well, of time, and hundreds of millions of years. Science fiction is filled with that. Sure. Uh, uh, I have an ethical problem as far as human beings are concerned, and maybe in other stars they have different ethics. I'm sure they would. Uh, I would have a problem with condemning my progeny to, uh, to spending their life traveling mm. to a distant star. Mm. It's one thing for me to make that decision for myself. I might be willing to spend a working lifetime going to Proxima Centauri and back. <laughs> uh, but to ask my children that are unborn to do that, that, uh, that, that strikes me as... That would violate my sense of ethics. And, uh, uh, but as you look at the, the universe, uh, I, I, I guess there's only two logical possibilities. One, there are other forms of life, and then I guess other forms of low life or sentient, intelligent life, or there isn't any. I mean, those are the 
only two possibilities. Yes. Uh, what, what would it mean in either case? I mean, let's say we came to the point billion years in the future where we were convinced that there was no other life in the universe yes. but us. The planets were there, but they were all sterile like Mars. What would you think? Um, well, we'll have to face that when we find well, out. Well, we won't but, be there. But. Uh, I'd, I'd be terribly disappointed, as I was disappointed that there was not life on Mars, mm. uh, because it would have been a lot more interesting if there had been. Sure. And so it, this would be a more interesting universe if, uh, if, if there's life scattered around. And we can maybe find out. I mean, we're, we're, we're approaching this very timidly. We're not going to go there, but we can look there. That's what we've always done. Uh, we haven't been to Mars, but we've got a couple of robots on mm -hmm. Mars that are doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. These guys are great. And, uh, uh, and they, don't, they don't complain about the cold nights or break for lunch or any of these things. Or go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the, and uh, so I'm all for robots doing that. I, I think I have problems with human beings doing it. And I have the ethical problems and other problems, it's just not very practical. Terribly old-fashioned. <laughs> I mean, we, we do things with machines now. We don't have to do these things ourselves. Uh, but we can look on distant suns. We're now actually being able to see planets on distant suns. We could build a telescope, not like the telescopes we've built so far. They would have to be telescopes with a very large baseline. In space. In space. So we would, uh, 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 we would have a baseline, perhaps across the solar system. Uh, with reflectors, uh, uh, w with light gathering equipment on opposite sides of the uh, of the solar system, with that we could uh, we could see a considerable amount of detail. We uh, uh, we would at the very least be able to get spectroscopic information from the atmospheres of these distant planets. Which would tell us a lot Which about whether there's life there. Which could have telltale signs of life. It, it, and we're assuming that it would be life, sort of like life on Earth. Mm -hmm. Probably carbon-based. We don't. It's hard to imagine chemistry complex enough to do it that's not carbon-based. Though maybe we're not imaginative enough. Uh, so, but but in all likelihood, we would be able to tell. There would be signs in the atmospheres of those planets that would tell us whether there might be life.